and on behalf of the Academics Event Committee, I'd like to welcome you all back here for the spring semester at CC. We're getting off to a really great start with this appearance uh, by Omar Fendon, who will be introduced in just one moment. Uh, before we get started, I'd just may like to make one announcement about a couple of events taking place today on campus to celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Uh, the first event will take place today at 2. Um, it's going to be in the Lennox House on Nevada at the Butler Center for Intercultural Leadership. It's going to start, like I said, at 2, and it's going to have two sessions. The first one is Thoughts and Reflections, A Colorblind Society. And the second one is How Racist Are You? Microaggressions and Their Subtle Impact on Campus Culture. The second event will actually take place right here in Armstrong tonight at 7. Um, it's going to be a very dynamic and joyous celebration of Martin Luther King Day with Cleo Parker Robinson Dance Troupe with the Gospel Music Workshop of America Choir. I really hope to see you all there to celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Idris Goodwin, who is the Mellon Fellow at the art, um, in the Arts at Colorado College, who will in turn introduce Omar Effendum. Good morning, y'all. How you doing? Yeah, that's right. Uh, one more time from Marula, spitting bars, killing it. Uh, so very, very exciting uh, morning. Uh, so let me get, get right down to it. So uh, our guest today, uh, just a few facts about him. Born in Saudi Arabia to Syrian parents, raised in Washington, D.C. Uh, he uses his lyrical talents to bridge his Mideastern roots with his Western upbringing. Um, and he does it very well. H how many of y'all have checked out the uh, Syrian Americana uh, online, Omar's album? Okay, make sure you, that was pitiful. Make sure you, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's not a professional opinion, that's just a lay opinion. Uh, Make sure you cop that. Um, so Omar's performance is part of a year-long campus-wide exploration of the contemporary Islamic uh, world uh, that's continuing with exhibitions over in the Idea Space and Coburn Gallery. Um, there's an exciting roster of events taking place during Cornerstone Arts Week, which is February 8th or February 4th through the 8th, um, and today is presented by the Interdisciplinary Arts Program uh, with special thanks to the Cultural Attractions Fund. Now, uh, just as NWA, Public Enemy, and Nas created soundtracks to a black and Latino urban experience, Offendum reports from and for Syrian Americana. He is a clear student of hip hop music and rhymes in the tradition of the politically and socially minded wordsmiths that define hip hop as a true art for the people. Uh, he's a, an apt guest today for uh, MLK day, uh, because just like MLK was a young and ambitious uh, individual who used language to galvanize and get the people uh, ready for justice and ready to fight the hard battles, um, today you're going to see uh, someone who's doing the same thing. Uh, but I'm not the opening act today. Uh, we have a wonderful opening act, a little special treat for y'all. Uh, he's one of your own. He is uh, similar to a in the sense that he also uh, is sort of willing to speak truth to power and do so with a, a, a good amount of swag, I would say. Uh, you know, but again, that's not, that's not a professional diagnosis or anything. You know, uh, I do not have a doctorate, uh, like in the traditional sense, uh, but I do have a doctorate in rock and shit. Anyway, so <laughs> please welcome to the stage. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first, he's a first year student, uh, well on his way to running the whole school. Put your hands together for my brother, Muhammad Mia. How's it going, everyone? 
before I start, I have to like Instagram this just because it looks amazing. Just had to do it. <laughs> All right. So this piece, this piece is a very personal piece for me. Uh, my name is Muhammad, and you can easily identify that name as a Muslim name. So growing up, I had a lot of differences with that name. So it took a lot of time for me to eventually come to terms with that name. So this is my magnum opus on my reflection of self. Why is it that upon introduction, the name Muhammad conjures explosive images of IEDs in Iraq? Apocryphal tales of pedophile prophets of the collapsible structure of the world trade that sinister September as thousands perish within the embers. A name bestowed to millions worldwide, once defined as praiseworthy now, a mere justification for TSA agents to pull you aside for a random screening. So now we shorten our name to three letters, M-O-E, simply so we can be seen as citizens of the USA. Force-fed football and American pie, we assimilate lime pride culture to evaporate. Eradicate the boiling pot, replace it with some iron locks, threw away the key, and had them stark naked with hoods on as Guantanamo guards laughed and stood about. Go back home, terrorists are not welcome, spray painted in red on garage doors or the front lawn. Shame on Alawadi to Trayvon Martin, whether hoodies or hijabs, perhaps religion or race, innocent lives lost make resilience grow strong. From Selma, Alabama to Palestinian borders, the nooses of the past have come back to haunt us. I envision new world orders where Muslims will be slaughtered, placed in internment camps. They've already started torture. During troubled times such as these, I remember what was taught to me, not through Quranic verses or radical imams inciting indifference, but rather through Jefferson when he said, a government that fears the people is truly a democracy. However, we seem closer to Tunisian tyranny with wiretapped phones and surveillance secret eyes emblazoned upon pyramid heights, hidden domestic spies silent within wallets watching us walk by. Far too many seem content with living a lie, but I'd rather die upon my feet than to live upon my knees. And if the blood of a scholar weighs more than the blood of a martyr, then every time I write, I bleed. And every time I speak, I'm waging war with well-placed words against the injustice of the world, and still I stand. A beacon of hope to the youth, because adults always think we're up to no good. I hope to be the brain sparked by Tupac when he said he wouldn't be the one to change the world, but he hoped to spark the brain that would. I hope to be the voice, the bearer of the flag, bringing forth a new era. I hope to do all this, and maybe one day you'll think of me when you hear the name Muhammad. Peace. <laughs> Muhammad was in my class a couple months ago. Just want to <laughs> point that out. Um, make sure, uh, following the wonderful performance that you're about to see, uh, that you boogie on over to the Cornerstone main space for a little reception, uh, you know, a little hangout, eat a little something, laugh, talk. Um, <laughs> so, Omar Findum, a uh, couple things that I just wanted to point out. Um, obviously, the content that you're going to hear is fascinating and relevant. Um, but the thing that, that I know I found really compelling about Omar was that um, he never forgets that his primary worth as an MC is the ability to also make people move, you know what I mean, physically, to nod the head. So technically speaking, he's also a very, very good rapper, you know what I'm saying? So. Yes, the content all day. Yes, I'm down with that. But uh, he's also got mad skills. And for those of you who are interested in music and, and, and going forward and pursuing that, um, the other thing that's, that's worth noticing uh, uh, or learning about is that Omar is 100% independent. Uh, and by that, I mean that he's not co-signed by any label or anything like that. He is completely motivating this through his own ideas, his relationships, and his ability to use social networking and media uh, and, and, and things like that. And so, and he's managed to, to be known all around the world. Um, and he's here with us today in the great city of Colorado Springs. So put your hands together, y'all, for Mr. Omar Fender. came out of the Holy Land, and he said, I come bearing an olive branch and a freedom fighter's gun. Do 
Colorado College, it is a pleasure to be here. Before I begin, I just wanted to dedicate this performance lecture to Martin Luther King Jr. and to the souls of all the freedom martyrs of the civil rights movement and people fighting for human rights all across the world, from the United States of America all the way to Syria. And I wanted to commemorate that with a quick moment of silence. All right, y'all. Um, I appreciate the cosign, Idris. And I just wanted to know, was that your professional opinion, or was that, uh, <laughs> that was professional? Can we get a round of applause for my brother Idris, and of course, for Muhammad Mia. I had, uh, I had the honor of, of hanging out with these brothers yesterday in a very informal gathering, a little luncheon that was put together. Uh, by uh, the person who organized my, uh, my coming here. Her name is Jessica Hunter Larson. I also wanted to hear a round of applause for her. <clears throat> we had a very fruitful discussion indeed, and, um, and I appreciated the fact that you kept emphasizing that. For, for me, it's just as much about the content as it is about the quality. And uh, so that said, I wanted to start this off right. Can you guys help me out here? What is this? One is just where I'm starting. Two. Two for this pair I'm sporting. Three. Three is the charm of times. Four is the horseman's sign. Five is my brother's path. Six is a dozen's half. It's the heaven's last. Brismillah. For line life. Divine right. Daniel's ocean. Munster's motions. Lucky joints. Wilson's points. Five thrice. Candle lights. All movies. Night life, her voting rights, Manu Ginobili. Get your drink on, Gat Power, Michael Jordan, Jack Bauer, Sense and Quarters, Marathoning, The Club, Teeth Were Forming, Rubik's Moves, The New 20, <laughs> Flavor Scoops, Lines Plenty. Make some noise for yourselves, yo. You have to forgive me, I um, want a bit of a time, time crunch here, so I'm going to be looking at my phone just to keep things in order. And I also wanted to pull up a quote that really inspired me this morning uh, by Martin Luther King Jr., may he rest in peace, in which he said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. And I sincerely hope it's what you guys are getting here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am a Syrian-American hip-hop artist. Uh, I was born in Saudi Arabia. I was raised in Washington, D.C. I've been living in Los Angeles for the past nine years. So therefore, I was born in the KSA, raised in the USA, and I'm repeatedly hassled by the TSA. <laughs> oh, that's my only joke for the day. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, actually, while we were doing some setup here, some students started to gather up front, and I walked upstairs, and on my walk up, I heard somebody say, you know, yeah, he's a Syrian rapper. And I didn't even know where Syria was. I had to look it up. And <laughs> it, it's cool. I get it. Just, uh, just so you know, um, it's bordered by Turkey and Iraq and Jordan and Lebanon and Israel, Palestine. Uh, and it is actually home to some of the oldest cities in the world, some of the oldest civilizations in the world, and currently is in the throes of a regime revolution, a revolutionary uh, movement that has been taking place for the past two years almost, uh, that has claimed the lives of over 60,000 people, has created more than half a million refugees uh, internally and externally in the neighboring countries, uh, and has caused much devastation uh, and has begun to spill over into other countries as well. Um, and if people have been paying attention to what's been happening in the Middle East over the past couple years, we have what uh, the Western media has liked to dub the Arab Spring, which are in fact just revolutions uh, that saw the ousting of some regimes in Egypt and in Tunisia and in Libya. And Syria is by far uh, the bloodiest and the longest one. But you know, in reality, when we look at history and we look at revolutions, um, they always took a long time. What, what happened in Egypt, the dictator stepping down in 18 days, uh, that was pretty unprecedented. Uh, and the simple fact is the dictator stepping down is really just the first step in a long process uh, in which people have to start to build uh, and rebuild uh, and create a civil society in places that for the longest time had no options, no choices, no freedoms. And so it's given me a whole new appreciation for what it is to be an American. Uh, and at the same time, I maintain a very strong connection to Syria. My immediate family lives there. My extended family lives there. And so the things I say and do here can actually have an effect on them back there. Uh, and that's something that I'll probably get into a little bit later. But I wanted to start it off uh, with a track called Damascus. This is, in fact, a translation of one of my favorite poets uh, by the name of Nizar Qabbani. He was probably one of the most prolific poets of the 20th century in the Middle East. He was from Syria. He was from the city of Damascus. And this poem was called al Qasida al-Dimashqiyya, the Damascene poem. Uh, and I translated it into this track right here. We get a round of applause from my man Marco and all the folks helping out with AV today. How you feeling, Colorado Springs? Make some noise, guys. Yeah. All right, I got a question real quick. Help me out. So if I ask you what's Damascus like, tell me that it's like a glimpse into the afterlife, all right? Said so if I ask you what's Damascus like, say it's a... That's what I tell them when they, huh, ask me what's Damascus like, I tell them that it's like a... A hellish heaven, heavenly hell, when relishing in poetic embellishments, memory fails, see, this is Damascus. And this is a glass of spirit comfort I love, but I'm aware of the fact that certain kinds of love can slaughter you in their wrath. I'm a Damascene being, dissect me into halves and have not, but grapes and apples fall in your path. Open my veins with scalpels, hear ancestral chants of heart. Transplants can cure some of the passionate. Why does mine stay torn in half and minarets crying tears of absence? Like trees are so speak, years have passed them. You can hear them asking for civil rights to live amongst tears of jasmine as house cats take naps relaxing. Hey, this is Damascus. What this man, Armando Mancinero, is saying is that it's the saddest thing in this world. But hey, this is how I feel for you. So, if I ask you what's Damascus like, tell me that it's like a there it is. Said if they ask you, what's Damascus like? Say it's a glimpse into the afterlife. That's what I tell them when they huh, ask me, what's Damascus like? I tell them that it's like a hellish heaven, heavenly hell. When relishing in poetic embellishments, memory fails. Coffee grinders crackling, childhood reminders back when. How could I forget when my reaction to cardamom strong fragrance yet and still finds attraction? As proud fathers wait for a sweet daughter's face, I'm asking. My roots, heart, and language are here. How am I supposed to make myself any more clear? Is clarification necessary with love so dear? So much so, there was no fear. How many Damascene bracelets were sold for this poetry here? Apologizing to the willow, wondering if my little siblings can hear My parts been scattered cross coast for years Lanterns on horizons floating, saddened eyes have lost their hopes To see it, once again, it is the saddest thing in this world But hey, 
for ti. This is how I feel for you. So, no. if I ask you what's the mask is like, tell me that it's like. Yes, and if they ask you what's the mask is like, say it's a glimpse into the afterlife. That's what I tell them when they huh, ask me what's the mask is like. I tell them that it's like. A, Hellish heaven, heavenly hell, when relishing in poetic embellishments never be fail. See, we're tossed around in shoreless oceans only to be hunted down by devils and demonic ghosts. Our battle garbage, rapid pros and rapid flows, it's apropos. So no war is open to them, that's for show. Identity your Arabness resembling a widow, though. Is there no festivus for the rest of us? History books can show what will remain of poetry's originality of so many a brown nose and liar gets to have complete control. How they gon' ever write a verse that's been killer still approach? I bore the burden of my words upon my back. Back until I grieve, which shall remain a poetry when it is finally relieved. The saddest thing in this world, my lady, is knowing that we were meant to be from the very start. That may never be. So I think you know what he's saying by now. And I hope you remember what I'm about to ask you. If I ask you what's the mask is like, tell me that it's like a. Colorado College. If I ask you what's the mask is like, say it's a glimpse into the afterlife. That's what I tell them one day. Huh. Ask me what's the mask is like. I tell them that it's like a this hellish heaven, heavenly hell. When relishing in poetic embellishments, memory fails, and that's the light. You know those verses were penned over 20 something years ago in Arabic. And when I think about Damascus today, it's almost as if they were written today. Mizar al Qabani, rest in peace, and of course, rest in peace, everybody who's passed away in Syria over the past two years. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated, Omar. We're really high up here. Um, <clears throat> no pun intended. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Happy birthday, by the way. Can we all say happy birthday to this lovely lady right here? Yes, indeed. Um, you know, speaking of Damascus, like I said, it's one of the longest continuously inhabited cities on planet Earth. And given that hip hop is this urban culture, more specifically the street culture, I always thought it was cool to be able to represent one of the oldest urban and street experiences in the world. And so I wrote this particular piece called Straight Street, AKA a street called Straight. Um, I wanted to recite it for you guys, if that was cool. Is anybody familiar with Straight Street? Not my song, just in general. Uh, it's referenced in the Bible. It's where St. Paul got his sight back on the road to Damascus, all that stuff. The street called Straight, yes. I'm like, yeah, the Bible, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even Christian, and I know that. <laughs> hey, so I took a stroll down a street called Straight. Met a medicine man about a third of the way. Predecessor to the pusher man with something to say about an apple a day keeping the sickness away. I valued his advice at face at first till he enlightened me to how precisely nature works. Giving the citrus fruits in wintertime for vitamin C. Just met each other, but I'm already invited for tea. SubhanAllah, as fate would have it, he and I turn out to be related. A small world's even smaller when you're Arab, ain't it? Made it a point to soak in all his information about regenerative meditations and preventative medication like a modern Ibn Sina with a pretty calm demeanor and a remedy for everything that plagued the Arab nations. Yet when asked to how to cope with our impossible fate, he just said, follow the middle path to a street called. And so I took a stroll down a street called Straight. Met a spiritual teacher about two thirds of the way. Predecessor to the preacher man with something to say about a prayer every day keeping the Satans at bay. He spoke of angels on our shoulders and the angles of our solar, systematic self-destruction, metaphysical corruption with a danger to our polar ice caps till it's out of our control and in the hands of our beholder. We philosophized for over 20 minutes like that, taught me lessons, any questions he would give them right back, said the answers were within us, and I didn't like that. But I realized later why he did it like that. See, I had so much more to learn. The clock was ticking, couldn't stall. Committed his words to memory. His wisdom was enthralling. Yet when asking him, what was the most important to recall? He just said, follow the middle path, straight street, and that is all. And so I took a stroll down a street call. Stay on beat now. 
Took a stroll down a street called Straight. Met a carpenter hard at work at the end of the way. Predecessor to the architect with something to say about not doing tomorrow what should be finished today. Say he manipulated wood and metal till it followed function. Building all through via rector and cardo maximus junction. Something told me he was wise beyond his years. I had a feeling from the way that he'd exposed the beams and ornamented ceilings with an ambidextrous half nonchalantly jest and laugh saying that my western education made it hard to grasp his connection to the past. Deep rooted in his craft. But was more than willing to share with me these tools he knew I lacked and for that I will be grateful. Learning how to build the monumental for the playful and the humble, for the faithful. You would ask how we'd stack against the impossible odds. He just said, follow the middle path, straight street to the gods. Thank you. <laughs> Next track, Marco. So, uh, need some help on this one. Just sing the hook with me, it's real easy. It's called Destiny, so all you gotta say is. It's hard living in the West when I know the East got the best of me, say. Could be looking in my eyes, but you never really see the rest of me now. Can you hear me, my city? Bilingual's what I'm blessed to be here. <laughs> بين الجبلين عين حبل الطرفين أمهاتنا حبة ذاتنا مو عجبهن ما سباتنا هذا الحكي بين أخواتنا زين العرب والأمريكان الله يرحم كل أمواتنا أغاني مثل مهاتنا إذا إن العين بالعين ما صفى عنا عيون بالشام بلاد الشام من فلسطين لجبال لبنان قبل ما اختار الحدود من سكندرون لكردستان جد سخان مخاند مخانونا أولاد العم بس دمنا دمهم بني آدم مو زمهم على كتافنا شلنا هم ليه الله بيعلم بس تاكل في الدش وبسكيت أحسن لك من مئة مليون مسدس تعرف ليه لأن مو عجبهم بسمتك بس بتسب رسمتك شاب عربي ومسقط تعطيهم خاتمتك وإذا لسه مو راضين ذكرهم كلام إليا نسي طين ساعة إنه طين Yeah, it's hard living in the West when I know the East got the best of me say. Could be looking in my eyes but you never really see the rest of me now Now can you hear me, my city? Bilingual's what I'm blessed to be here I write right to left, you write left to right Metaphor of a foreigner's plight, dressed to tight Stereo on a mic, scenario of a fight The burial of a tight, imperial at his height So Turkish rap is the light, Semitic etiquette might Just have you roll in your auras, poetic and light And grab a hold of your sorrows to relieve your tomorrows Make it easier to borrow the aesthetics you bite Like all the Arabic loan words and Spaniards and Marvas The karma, inquisition, visions of horror Tell me who's the explorer really was it Columbus, Hamad al Adrisi, a rap of Ragnus? Throw up while you figure it out. I'm gonna start with a cipher, that's a suffer, no doubt. So you might not have learned to live with me. Sure as hell can't without. I'm your destiny. It's hard living in the West when I know the East got the best of me. Say, could be looking in my eyes, but you never really see the rest of me now. Now, can you hear me, my city? Bilingual's what I'm blessed to be here. حمام السلام افتحي أجنحتك وطيري. So this right here is a sample from uh, Paul Anka, one of the first pop teen idols of the United States, originally from Lebanon. See, out of shooting at each other from Iraq to Palestine, Syria to Lebanon, Algeria to Sudan, pedagogy of the oppressed trickling down, conquering through division. And sadly, this isn't the first time. One land, one love, one chance, one blood. No fuss, no fight. Yeah, right, young blood. AKs cheaper than a book. Crooked leaders in a hook, getting fished out. Missiles getting dished out. Hmm. By the West, press, get a big shout from the people getting rich out of this. Now, what's this really all about? Land, money, or power? Was the colonizer's fault, but now it's really just ours, leaving a sour taste in our mouths like generational slave names. Whenever speaking out, outspoken leaders getting taken out, quicker than belligerent drunks in a bar. So I'll be a far cry from living this one. When I say hip hop, you say one love. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Make some noise for yourselves, guys. And gals. <laughs> Another sip of my water. So, I want to share something with you guys that I wrote a couple years ago, and I'll admit I wrote it in a rather pessimistic, even cynical state of mind. Because I was thinking to myself, we have all these problems in the Arab world, and how on earth are we ever going to be able to solve them? And so I thought, you know what? If a superhero came flying out of the sky, that might be a good start. 
lo and behold, that superhero was in fact the youth of the Arab world who have risen up to make it happen for themselves over the past two years. And if you feel like clapping for that, you can. <clears throat> While some men sank in trepidation and banked on medication from angst of separation, the stylib got by. And advanced through dedication, enhanced by preparation and chance of meditation, his cognizance high. The mantra was fly like bombs in the sky, a constant surprise, his impossible rise through the ranks, steady walk in the planks, throwing rocks at the tanks on the blocks of an occupied Middle East, bereft, not an olive tree left, seeing theft in the keys to the lock he'd kept, steep steps on the stairway to peace, he slipped, and petroleum made these trips that much slicker. Billy crystallized, the city lights flicker, silly pistols fired, a street fight triggered, other men to fall off their grandstand, still he held his ground like a handstand, damn. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero, and he came to bring change, unite the divided, and free him from the chains of these tyrants who reign in vain and pain. I said, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but the only thing keeping us from going insane is knowing he'll be back again, see? Amidst military coups and the critics of his literary views, he's pitted, wary, given very few alternatives to violence, and yet and still he carries on through scary obstacles contrary to Popular belief he can keep a cool head amongst grief-stricken, war-torn Middle East streets sticking by the weak mothers of the bleak future as populous, confident he speaks truth through the cracked concrete of urban eruptions, proving that policies of curb and corruption can further the function of justice and earning the trust of a people who've all been flustered, can't move forward, still make babies as though it's all good, running around barefoot, can't afford sandals, huddling by candles to pray, hey, it's nothing that an out of Superman can't handle, look up in the sky, it's a... It's a, it's an, and he came to bring change, unite the divided and free him from the chains of these tyrants who reign in vain and pain. I said, look up in the sky. It's a, it's a, it's an, yeah, I know it sounds strange, but the only thing keeping us from going insane is knowing he'll be back again. See, like a couple better went home, so I'm too tense. I'm writing up these relevant songs, I do vent, waxing poetic on the fact that pathetic leaders act sympathetic when we know they ain't sent not one cent or irsh of aid to refugees, pop belly kitsch, they lay in SUVs, not really skilled, who braves this mess you leave? What must we say to pass over these developmental disasters that are lying ahead? Living in denial like Egyptian pyramids, coming to a point where the bubble's gonna burst and desalinize water, we'll no longer quench our thirst. We need a glass half full for the youth shine, an optimistic outlook from the roof line like bat signals till the criminals fade away. Now here he comes to save the day. Um, so some really awesome things are happening in Washington, Washington D.C. right now, which is um, where I grew up. You might not think it's awesome, I think it's awesome, whatever. Anyway, this next track is dedicated to the city I grew up in, Washington, D.C., and I wanted a little help with this one. It's real simple. Uh, when I do that classic cheesy Jersey Shore fist bump, I want you to just say D.C. Can we do that? D.C. One more time. D.C. This time. D.C. You can say C.C. if you want, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Hit me, man. <laughs> yes. Hey, yo, check it. I used to run around Tyson's on some DMC until I got my own license at the DMV. Started to hit the city nightly on that GWP. Now that's the parkway. We caught it the sparkway. Me and T had dreams of blowing up like TNT. The Beltway bombers promising to pay homage. Red, yellow, blue, green. Orange line delay on it. Marvin Gaye, Kwame Ture, still getting taxed with no say on it. Let freedom ring like Curtis Doyle. I need a ring. Tone rapper to realize I'm a grown rapper. Showing these yappers and whippersnappers. I'll be the king. Ruling the world. I'm not blowing up like when Curtis sing The breaks, the blues, big band rhythms The swing, Duke, Ellington's U Street Cherry blossoms of spring Redskins, Capitals, Wizards, Nationals These are a few of my favorite things I got that DC pride Moving with a swagger, that's my DC stride Take them through the streets like a DC God, Maryland, Virginia Yeah, we wide, right? Now this that DC pride Gliding through the city on a DC high Free world capital my, we make them break the rules, that's what we see. 
Yeah, hey, yo, see this is the District of Columbia, city of imperfection, where homeless people sleep beneath the monuments erection. Type of place decisions made by which you be affected, and mayors caught smoking a rocket still get reelected. Really eclectic, murder cap not to be f with. Washington bullets fly like Rod Strickland and Red Fitz. Entries and exits to the politics and nexus. We welcome in Obama, but Bush was better in Texas. Federal inspectors, lobbyists, general sexists, ambassadors, metro passengers carry protection in every direction. North, south, east to the west. A cemetery where my pops resting, the cops dressed in blue and black, leaving brothers black and blue. Evidence markers, number in the street signs too. 14, 16, 18, thorn through. Three stars, two stripes, red and white. Thanks to you, I got the DC pride. Moving with a swagger, that's my DC stride. Take them through the streets like a DC God. Maryland, Virginia, yeah, we wide. Ride, now this that DC pride. Gliding through the city on a DC high. Free world capital. Ma, we make them break the rules. That's like here. Shout out to the whole DMV area. For those who don't know, that's DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Seems like we got some people who know. Northern VA to be exact. Anybody repping a 202, 301, 703, 240, 571. Way more people than I thought, actually. What up? Make me feel at home. You know, we got this really strange phenomenon in Washington, D.C., the capital of the free world, capital of the United States of America, where the residents of the District of Columbia have to suffer under something called taxation without representation. We come to take ownership of it. It's on our license plates and whatnot, but it's not cool. I mean, does it sound fair to you? All right, well, I need your help here. When I do the fist bump, I need you to say represent. Can we do that? All right. Can we do that? All right. Check it out. Yo. It's taxation without representation, but now it's time to represent. Yeah. It's taxation without representation, but now it's time to represent. Yeah. It's taxation without representation, but now it's time to represent. Uh. It's taxation without representation, but now it's time to represent. DC. DC. CC. CC. DC. DC, CC, make some noise, y'all. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So, um, you guys heard this yesterday. In an effort to increase the literacy, a lot of the whack MCs I'm often forced to call my peers. I took it upon myself to alphabetize the following verse. I'm gonna go through the alphabet forwards, backwards, and forwards again, and it goes like this. <clears throat> Where you going? <laughs> Just kidding. <sighs> Alphabetic brothers can disseminate energy fluidly, guiding hereditary imagery, justice, kindness, lovely marriages, never of parameters, question, regularly suspected terrorismist. <laughs> Under victory's watch, xenophobic young zealots yield Xerox worldviews. Unintelligent televangelists so readily quoted. People often needed motivation. Lost kids joke it hurts. Getting fingerprinted every day. Discriminated. Call barbaric error by crusaders desecrated. Entering foreign gates. Hesitantly immigrated. Journeying kaleidoscopic languages. Miseducated. Naturalized. Organized. Prophesized. Quadraphonic. Record set. Typed up. Verse war. Xylophonic yell. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Plus ten. Alphabetic bar spit. Sixteen. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Next track, Marco. This one right here is another translation of Mizar Qabani's poetry. It's called Qariyat al Fanjan, aka the coffee cup reader, aka the fortune teller. And this poem was actually sung by one of the most famous singers in the Middle East, a man from Egypt by the name of Abdul Harim Hafiz. May he rest in peace. And when the beat drops, just snap your fingers like this. جلست والخوف بعينيها تتأمل فنجان المقلوب قالت يا ولدي لا تحزن فالحب عليك هو المكتوب she sat with fear in both her eyes, pondering this Turkish coffee cup inverted carefully. She worded destiny and time. Don't you grieve, my son. Love is written for you in the signs. Martyrdom, he who dies religiously, but love is blind. Your coffee cup is terrifying. A life of traveling and battling. A lot of love, a lot of death, a load of pain and ravels. As you're chasing after every woman on that planet only to return like a defeated king, lascivious and lonely. 
you said love is free. But why did fortune teller charge me a fee just to say that? It's a fair question, right? Huh. I'm free to love, but nobody's willing to reciprocate. Now check it. In your future, there's a girl whose eyes alone can make you praise the Lord. Lips shaped like grapes, beautiful. Her laugh is musical. Celeste sky above's a gloomy gray that rains and pours. Roadblock, dead, locked, immutable. Sight unusual. The woman of your dreams sleeping in a palace tower. Guarded by both dogs and soldiers like so which will make you cower. And the princess of your heart in a slumber from the start. Suitors lost, climbing fences to a brooder. Who'd have thought? I read many palms and horoscopes before, but I have never seen a coffee cup resembling your coffee cup. Never seen sorrows like the sorrows emanating from this demi -tasse. Your destiny, walk on dagger tips of love so many times, the solitude of seashells, weeping, willow wee wells, if you stuck in currents of an oceanic love for females, the details, love and lose a million times only, to return like a dethroned king, lascivious and lonely. This right here is actually a Barbra Streisand sample. Why do people always laugh when I say that? He's actually singing a song called Love Is by John Lennon, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. May he rest in peace. Yeah. I read between the lines like fortune tellers with a coffee cup. And I ain't talking about them frappuccinos with that frothy stuff. Our peoples are of equal standing in the eyes of God we trust. But what the ones who show the blame with everisms on me bust? I'm sick of asking why. Wanna kick a passion fly. When a man is rich, weather and golden knowledge, he should try to treat the poverty of other brothers with consideration. Knowing that the highest form of flattery is imitation. It's another iteration of the same bitter taste with that same limitation. Faint recollections of her face in a lacing. The bars of the jail where there ain't visitation. Man, I hate being patient. Rather be the doctor. Diagnose a higher dose of Maya Copa, not your general hospital. Scrubbing soap or opera. Your local waster. Connect the dot. Hopeful. God, I took the journey. It's out of curiosity. How many people in here have ever been in love? Ugh, that's kind of sad, y'all. When I say one, you say love. One, 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 one. I keep snapping. Makduro ka entembi abada. Fi bahr al hubi, bi ghairi qulwa. Wa tuhibu malayin al marati. Wa tarja. Thank you. If you like what you hear today, I suggest you log on to www.offendum.com and like all my social networks, facebook.com slash offendum, Twitter, at offendum, Instagram, at offendum. And I'm probably going to do what Muhammad did later and take a picture of you beautiful people to show my friends on Instagram. Sorry, I can't tag you. I don't know who you are, but I might if you come up to me later. <laughs> you know, for far too long, a Middle Eastern freedom song was considered improbable or not even optional. The Arab youth were too irresponsible, religion an obstacle. But this was inevitable to the conscious folk who knew what was possible. Conditions were optimal. This domino effect they all neglected was unstoppable. Ripples spill to waves quick as martyrs fill the graves. No lament, whatever it takes. Our soldiers are spent, but these are the breaks. We're told as men to never mistake a brother's kindness for a weakness. Well... The same applies to tyrants, sick in a prize, a sign of greatness. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, put up by Mason so he will fall, flat on his face and give him the spoils, weapons, contracts, and oil. Oil? <laughs> what you cooking? Betting that they could keep getting away with the dough when nobody was looking, their hubris wouldn't let them believe they ever could leave, that everyone needed them, please. As bad as naive as thinking that Palestine will not be free. It ain't up to you, Mr. Despot, or shall I say desperate, shutting down the internet, just making us all the more restless. You just don't get it. It's bigger than Facebook, bigger than Twitter. Now, nah, this is the sum of years of living in fear while you got the glitter. But it was in gold when citizens' hopes were sold to the highest bidder. Go cry as rivers. Your crocodile tears are bitter. Sweet surrender, send them off, kicking and screaming with an agreement that their lenders cut them off at the knees and get to freezing bank accounts and whole amounts for what they stole amounts to treason. Till all these clowns start stepping down or skipping town, it's hunting season. Yeah, the air is clear, we're finally breathing. 
But I can't tell you what it means to me when hearing millions of my people chant for peace and freedom, so rebelling, overwhelming, wish my father lived to see them. Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Oman, Bahrain, Sudan, Somalia, Algeria, Iraq, Maghreb, Lebanon, Kuwait, Urdan, Saudi, UAE, Mauritan, Djibouti, Qatar, Qumr, Syria, Palestine. And we won't stop until there's Hurriya, Palestine. So we won't stop until there's... Hey, nice. <laughs> Make some noise, yo. All right. Winding it up here, a couple more tracks. Um, this next one is called Syria, or hashtag Syria. And um, the, uh, the hook on this song, as you will see, was lifted from um, uh, a YouTube clip. It was a, a posting from two summers ago, basically, uh, during one of the largest protests in Syria to date, where over half a million people hit the streets of Hama. Hama happens to be the town where my father, God rest his soul, was from. Uh, happens to be the town, well, the fourth largest city, actually, um, that in 1982 suffered a horrific massacre under the hands of the father of the current dictator, in which somewhere between 15 to 40,000 people, will never really know, uh, vanished in about a week. Uh, and a big chunk of the old city was raised, flattened, that is. Um, there was no YouTube back then, no cell phones, no camera phones to capture uh, what happened. There was perhaps one article written by a man named Robert Fisk, uh, but that was really it. Uh, and the people of Syria learned a very sad, sad lesson on that day, a very gruesome lesson uh, that stuck with them for decades. And so for them to rise up over the past two years and start to fight back against this dictatorship, um, I mean, the simple fact that they even hit the streets sent shivers down my spine, let alone seeing half a million of them. Uh, so I just wanted to put the song in a bit of context. And what they're actually chanting is, a shab yurid isqat al nizam the people want to topple the regime. And this is uh, a slogan that has rang true from Tunisia, started in Tunisia, uh, and made its way to Egypt, and to Libya, and Yemen, to Syria, Bahrain, many other places. And um, it's actually what sparked the revolution in Syria because uh, some kids had actually spray painted it on their uh, little ele elementary school, middle school walls, uh, which landed them in um, a secret prison, and they got tortured. And by the time that they were sent back to their families, um, bruised and bloodied, uh, the, the town was in an uproar. Uh, not the town of Hama, but another town uh, in the south of Syria called Dara. And that sparked what was essentially the first protest in Syria uh, that continued. And as the regime began to crack down violently, uh, the more they killed people, the more people came out to protest. And it was this cycle that just continued on and on for literally about eight months until uh, the opposition finally began to arm itself. Uh, now, almost two years later, we have what is described by many people as a civil war. Uh, I still think that's a bit unfair because um, the rebels are in no way uh, equipped the way that the regime is uh, with its tanks and its helicopters and its planes, but um, we'll see. Honestly, at this point, we just want the violence to stop and we want uh, what the people had been calling for for so long, and that is for this dictator to step down, to leave, uh, and um, at the end of this song, you're going to see a small clip by a man named Ibrahim Qashush, who was from the town of Hama. And in it, he's chanting a song that was perhaps one of the most famous of all the revolutionary songs in Syria. And these songs aren't things that people go record in a studio, by the way. This is just people out on the streets protesting and people filming it on their cell phones. And um, he was basically saying, Yalla irhal ya Bashar, oh, come on, leave Bashar, Bashar being the dictator of Syria. Uh, and that particular chant got so famous and was passed around, and people started chanting it in different cities. And uh, it kind of caught like wildfire and became the bane of the existence of this regime in many ways. And so uh, they sought him uh, and ended up killing him. Uh, they ripped out his vocal cords from his throat and threw him in the river. Uh, the Arantis River, which flows through Hama, uh, is actually called the Nahr al-Asi in Arabic. Asi meaning uh, disobedient. So the disobedient river, because it flows in the opposite direction of all the other rivers in the region. Very ironic name and an ironic place for him to find himself. And it's also the name of the square where the first part of this clip um, was filmed, Sahat al-Asi, the disobedient square. So just a little bit of context, Marco. Thank you. And thanks for listening. And thanks for coming. A shab yurid isqat al Half a million people. Shab. Shut
vibes in your mind And the people united will never be defeated I repeat, you leave the scar on your mind A shot, you leave the scar on your mind A shot, you leave the scar on your mind And let them in from cooking your lab, you haram Listen the purpose of these verses is to unify the masses. Hums up to Hesseke, Banyas to Damascus. City streets to countrysides, mountaintops to coastal tides. Muslim, Christian women, men and children, keep hope alive. Stand in solidarity with all your fellow citizens. Peacefully protesting for an end to all the militants. Torture and imprisonment, murdering of innocents. Proving that this lion leader's rule is illegitimate. Like father, like son, mobster or president. Censoring their people, trying to stop the embezzlement. Heavy handed iron fist dropped on the residents. Deja vu. 82 or 11 and we are all dead as Zod, we are all dead on. We are all just as good Halab and the Allahs. We are all Hamza, we are all Hamma, we are all Syrian. Hands to the summer saying Shah, we read the scar on the arm, Shah, we read the scar on the arm, Shah. You read the scar on the arm, and the people united will never be defeated. I repeat, the scar on the arm, Shah. You leave the scar from the bomb The people want to topple the regime Malayna min kun kul kun yo lad al haram now I have a dream, this regime will fall And that what comes next is gonna be better for us all Alawi, Dirzi, Ermeni, Kirdi Equality in Parliament and Kul Ilo Kirsi Envisioning a future that's brighter for the youth Who've been fighting for the right to shed light upon the truth Fighting bullets from the troops Thus far, a truce has proven elusive But martyrs tightening the noose on corruption Bribery, nepotism, tribal disputes Don't shoot with your mechanism Soon comes the reckoning that looms Second guessing the protesters was a recipe for Esad to address his own doom It's been a long time coming There's no turning back now Voices are the weapons in these military crackdowns Millions on the streets in defiance of your gat sounds Look who's got your show Got the donor how to act Now the shot You read the scar on the bomb The shot You read the scar on the bomb The shot You read the scar on the bomb And the people united will never be defeated I repeat The scar on the bomb The shot you read the scar on the arm, the shot. You read the scar on the arm, and then a man can kill your lad haram. Try saying it. You read the scar on the arm, the shot. You read the scar on the arm, the shot. You read the scar on the arm, the shot. You read. يا بشا يا كذاب تضرب انت وهالخطاب الحريه صارت على الباب ويلا ارحل يا ماهر ويا جبان ويا عميل الشيطان الشعب السوري ما بينهان ويلا ارحل يا بشار طز فيك وطز باللي بيحييك لك والله بعرف طلع فيك ويلا ارحل يا بشار حاجه تدور دمك في حمامه دور وخط اقمانه مغفور ويلا ارحل Rest in peace. So, uh, thanks to that song, I'm no longer allowed back in Syria. Bummer, innit? Um, but you know what? Hit that next track for me. This last track is called Syrian Americana. And it's a nation state of mind where everything is connected and everybody is welcome. And I want to thank you guys all for joining me here in Syrian Americana this morning at Colorado Springs. Make some noise for yourselves. Stand up, y'all. Syriana, Americana, that's where I want to be. Because they're reminded to live in solace, peace, and harmony. Hey, Mashuli, Umuri, Huduri, Daruri, Majburu, Fahur, Bjuduri, Suri, Lakshu, Harabuli, the story, O Mahuli, Uru, but Rosuri, Duri, Duri. Just want a yam, Mushul, Elibet, Murmuru, Lilibet, the Ritul, Hasur, and Mali, with Sarah, and Magali, Ma Balo, Histo, Latu, Rafo, Usto, Yapisto, Halabi. أدب عربي غلبي نهي عن السلب دابة على إرادة نبي خالق الأرض بالفعل الماضي مضارع والأمر اشتعل اشتعل وشعل الجمر في كارك النهر ونبع من مخي برد وزمزم قنبلة تخي تخي راسك انت فايد بيت فندم عائلة الشققي أسرة من طين ومن دم شو أساسك ليك بطلك هيك حتندم هيك حتندم تبكي تبكي عمر فندم <تصفيق> yeah. سيريانا أمريكانا That's where I want to be Why? Because here I'm promised to live in solace, 
peace and harmony, right? Syriana, Americana, that's where I want to be. Because there I can ish, that's live in harmony with no one but me and my family. Check it. It's that home, so nostalgic, that poem, known this sound, sick, that phone, click, clack, tone, lift that bone, give her back to him, look at that doom, still little hope, knots on a rope, big old black tomb, take him back through him, pick her back tunes, balls in the sky, make a rag bloom, all right again, and home, out in Babylon, was responsible for the current proud, lemmas in the fur, the crescent, what a dilemma, when they murder peasants, any fine matter, never learn a lesson, it's a fine line, between us with and west in hindsight, 2020, keep them guessing, get your mind right, ain't no half stepping, this is hip hop, what a blessing, and what a blessing you all are, thank you so much for coming out to support this event today. Can we get another round of applause for Jessica Hunter Larson at Idea Space for bringing me out here? For my brothers Idris and Muhammad. Another round of applause, y'all. Yeah. Um. Just wanted to end it all off with one last quote from Martin Luther King, in which he said, history will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. Don't let yourself be silent, people. Peace. Uh, there's a reception happening. Where? Cornerstone. Uh, come join us. Um, food, drinks, and smiles. Peace, y'all.